amongst the three types of extreme weather you can get wild wild camping being howling wind a lot of snow pouring rain by far for me the worst weather is wet weather and i'll try to avoid it where possible why you may ask well the answers are pretty obvious and i'm sure you know what they are uh, on one hand you're wearing your jacket to keep the rain out but on the inside doesn't matter how breathable the manufacturer says the jacket is if you're walking a lot you're going to build up sweat and you're getting damp on the inside and then the rain's hitting you from the outside so that's not good you got to get used to walking in wet feet and wet socks all day as you may cross rivers or go through tall grass and if you're used to taking picturesque photos or great videos like i try to do well that's going to be hopeless when the clouds low when visibility's low and so that's not going to work too well at all and the other things too on a safety note you've got to be careful of rising rivers so for those and many other reasons i'm not a great fan of going out when it's wet so in this two-part series what i want to do is draw from two recent wet weather trips i've been on to give you a few extra ideas on how to make tramping and hiking and camping in the wet a lot more enjoyable and if you're ready let's go first thing you've got to do is ask yourself is your tent fit for purpose in other words can the outer and the floor of your tent handle the wet weather you're about to subject it to if not you're literally screwed no not really there are a couple of things you can do your tent's ability to resist water is measured in what we call hydrostatic head on the floor that can range from a very low 3000 millimeters up to a very high 20,000 millimeters and on the outer a low would be a thousand millimeters and a very high would be around five and a half thousand millimeters the good news is though with a purpose-built footprint from the manufacturer of the tent or an inexpensive tart from a hardware store under the floor it can not only boost its strength it can also boost its ability to repel and resist water and something like nick wax on the outer can also be really helpful in increasing the hydrostatic head and waterproofness of your tent. One thing that really damages the waterproofness and the level of a tent is UV. If you can try to avoid direct sunlight or putting it up later in the day where there's less sunlight and less UV, that can really help it. Okay, so that helps sort out your tent. The next thing is how you carry your tent. Obviously, you're going to put it in a pack, you're going to put it in a rucksack, but you want to make sure because you may be going to rivers, you may be walking in rain literally for hours, that that tent is going to be kept dry and safe the whole time. There's a couple of things you can do. I always ensure that I pack all my gear, either in a compression sack, or in a thicker plastic liner so that if any rain does get around the pack it's not going to get in the pack. The other thing that I do is have a waterproof cover around my pack so that definitely no water is going to get in. You also want to make sure that your tent is very accessible. In other words, you have it towards the top of your pack or on the side of the pack. The last thing you want to do is have to take a lot of things out, put them onto wet ground and potentially get wetter as the rain hits it while you try to find your tent. So make it easier to get to and quicker. And before I go into the next tip, if you'd like to see more of these helpful videos, can I please ask that you subscribe to the channel and then that'll make sure you don't miss out. The best types of tents in wet weather to have are what we call multi-pitch. Now these are the types of tents that have the inner and the outer connected together so they go up as one unit. In a single pitch tent where the inner and the outer are separated, you've literally got to put up the inner, which is you've got mesh in it, up first with the poles, and then that will allow potentially water to hit the mesh and to get through and make your tent wet before you've even got it set up. You want to be able to find a place that's as flat as possible or ideally one that's on a slight slant so if there is a lot of rain that's going to come down it's going to go under your tent and not pull under it. On a recent trip we went on one of our members found out the really hard way that camping in the middle of where two nearby slopes drained all their water into wasn't the best place to pitch his tent. From a safety perspective, be mindful if you're camping near a river, that during the night up the river, the water could flow down and it really could turn your tent into a boat. And you don't want that to happen. If the ground is soft, it can be a good idea to either use nearby rocks, your walking poles, or multiple pegs to be able to cement and secure your tent into soft terrain if you have a separate ground sheet make sure that it's not protruding beyond the outer of your tent because if it is it'll literally become a rain trap that allow water to go directly under your tent which is one thing you're trying to avoid 
if you're in a place that's potentially going to attract a lot of water, what you can do is dig a trench around it, which will help divert the water away from your tent. All right, I think that's about it for part one. Thanks for us hanging around. Hey, in part two, what we're going to do is look at how to stay more comfortable in your tent and drying out your gear. We're also going to give you some tips on how to cook in your tent. And also, once it's all said and done, how do you pack your tent away, especially if you aren't going home, but you're on a multi-day type trip. So if you haven't subscribed yet, can I please ask that you do that? And if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. So until I see you in the next video, always stay safe, stay strong, see you in the next one team, bye.